Hello everybody and welcome to this, my first of three videos on the Sony Alpha A5000. Alright, so in this video we're going to just touch on what the camera is, the interface, the layout, where everything is. On the, in the second video we're going to go into depth on how to use the different features and functions. And then the third video is going to be the menu system. We're going to go through every single menu item, explain what it is and how it affects your photography. The Sony A5000 is an a mirrorless interchangeable lens camera. Now what that means is that the lens can come off and be put back on and there is no reflex mirror like the uh, interchangeable lens SLRs previous, the DSLRs, previous to mirrorless cameras had uh, had in them. It, is an, it has an APS-C sized 20 megapixel sensor, that's that right there, it has a multi-mode 200 segment light meter, shutter speeds of 30 seconds to 1 4,000th of a second, and bulb, and it also provides a 4 frame per second burst rate. The ISO range is 100 to 16,000 as well as auto. The flash sync speed is 1 60th of a second. So the Sony A5000 is, was, was my first, was it my first? I think that this was my first Sony camera. This one right here was my first Sony E-mount camera. And I got it for some lens experiments and and uh, about a year, year and a half after I got it, kind of grew out of it. It's a very good first camera. And uh, especially if you're looking to upgrade from cell phone photography, because it is the lowest tier price point and spec for its generation of Sony mirrorless cameras. Now the next series came before this. There were some lower tier and lower spec cameras than this, but of the alphas, the alpha mirrorless cameras, this is the lowest spec. It has plastic construction, a lower spec sensor than other cameras in the lineup, even in the 5000 lineage. The sensor on this is prone to magenta shifts on the edges of the image when you have very fast lens or poorly corrected lenses, and I honestly can't tell you why that is. This is the only camera I've had do that, but I've heard it's a common problem with this model and other models that share its sensor technology. It is very light. Uh, it is the only camera, the only digital camera I have that I think is lighter than this is the Nex 3. This is a super, super light camera. And it's also very small. It's perfectly pocketable. If you look at this compared to, say, a Pixel 5a, it is significantly smaller than although not narrower, obviously, than a cell phone. So if you are used to carrying around a cell phone for photography and want to expand your phot photographic uh, experience, this is a perfect camera to do that, like I said. This was made by Sony in Thailand. It was announced on 7 January 2014 and listed on Sony's website as discontinued on 3 January 2018. So a almost a four year uh, run on this camera, and that's pretty good. It was preceded by the next 3N, concurrent with the entire A5000 and early A6000 series, as well as second generation A7 bodies. It has been followed by nothing directly because the A6000 was concurrent with this, but was two steps up on the, the, t the ladder in terms of capabilities from this camera. So the A6000 is not really a direct follow on to the 5000. So if you have your A5000, let's go over as we do all of the features on it. There's a lot to cover with this camera. Here we are on the top, though technically on the sides, these are the strap lugs where you would connect your camera strap. This is the pop-up flash button and it is spring-loaded, not motor-powered like some other makers, which is good because that means it's more reliable for the long term. Here, right here are two holes. That's a stereo microphone for your camera, uh, for recording video. There is a sensor plane, ah, uh, there it is. There's your sensor plane indicator right here to let you know where your sensor plane is if you need very precise measurements. This is a zoom button if you're using a power zoom such as the kit 16 to 50. On off button for power. Movie mode for starting to record videos right there. On the front of the camera, we have the autofocus illumination light, make and, and, and line up. Your E-mount indicator, though, on this lens, you might be able to, see, on this camera, rather, you might be able to see it's pretty well worn from use. Lens mount, sensor, electronic contacts. On the camera's back, we have the flip-out 
uh, LCD screen right here, menu button, display button, drive mode button, ISO selection button, confirmation or OK button as it's called, exposure compensation button, play button, and delete button. On the camera's bottom we have a few different things. We have the serial number, tripod socket, battery chamber, and nope, not the SD card port. On this side of the camera we have, it's easier to flip out if we lift up the screen, we have the SD card port right here, a mini USB charging port right here if you want to plug the camera in and charge the battery that way, and an HDMI out port if you want to plug this camera into your TV and scroll and show off your photos on your TV. And then on this side of the camera we have an indication that this has NFC capabilities on it. So I do have some tips for using this camera and also if you haven't checked out my review of this camera I have a specific review video about the A5000. But my best tip for this is that it is small enough when you have the right lens to always keep it on you. So do that. This lens is actually pretty big, 16 to 50. If you got a nice flat pancake lens, you could very easily keep this in your pocket and just take it out anytime you wanted to. And do that. Do keep it on you. The screen only tilts out in landscape mode, not in portrait mode, but it flips all the way up. So you can use this for vlogging, or if you have the ability to set it up as a webcam, you could theoretically do that too. One note I would note about this is that it has a 1080p uh, video resolution. So if you are here in 2022 in the future, thinking about this for your YouTube channel, I would recommend going with a 4K camera, not a 1080 camera, just to improve your views. So one nice thing about the screen flipping out in landscape like this is it allows you to get low. So do that. It's a good practice. Get your camera down towards the ground as far as you can, use the screen to its fullest, and get low. So some things not to do with the camera. Uh, best tip is don't put your fingers directly on the sensor because leaving a fingerprint on your sensor is a... Fingerprints are very, very hard to clean off sensors. I'm just going to leave it there. So try to avoid that. Um, you know, don't leave it in your car because it would definitely be a theft target. A camera is a camera, especially a digital camera. The heat and the cold can also damage your camera significantly. Just remember it's also, even though the camera itself is lightweight, the lens isn't necessarily going to be. So if you drop this with a heavy lens, the camera can definitely suffer. Just bear that in mind. And the other thing is don't let it get wet because it's not weather sealed and if water gets inside of it, that will absolutely wreak havoc on the electronics. Thank you for watching this video. Please give me a thumbs up. That lets me know that I'm on the right track producing content which is useful and helpful to you. If you have any questions or comments, please leave those in the comments section below. I'm pretty good about checking these every couple of days and answering questions. If you have any suggestions or ideas for future videos, and if I have the technical know-how and equipment, I'm more than happy to make those. One last thing, thank you everyone for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Gotta get up, Steinbeck. I have to turn off the camera.